I know the title says use AI to build tech sales resume in an hour, but I'm about to say something that will piss off all the career coach on the internet. I don't think resume matter that much. But who am I? I'm Yvonne Zhang. I broke into tech sales within a month last year and started making 10k a month. And I replicate my success on my clients who is working at Toast and Okta now. But let's be honest, resume don't get you higher. Your energy does, your confidence does, and the way you show up in interview, that's what actually get you higher. But most people, they waste hours tweaking bullet points, stressing about formatting, and praying a font change will change their life. It won't. In this video, I'll show you how to build a tech sales resume using AI within an hour, not because resume matters, but because your time does. Let's stop obsessing over profession and start showing up like someone hiring manager would chase. And make sure you watch to the end because I have a free AI tool for you. It's like having me in your pocket when you need help for a tech sales career. One common question people always ask me is why some people can break into tech sales fast while others don't. So how come some of my clients, like they're basically new grads and they can get three offers within 10 days and eventually work at top company like Toast? And how come someone from a complete different industry break into Okta within three weeks working with me? So I'm going to answer three reasons. One, a lot has to come down to mindset loop. I was trying to learn about human behavior recently and I came across cognitive behavior theory. It basically say how we think affects how we feel and then it affects what we do. Just like most people, they're stuck in this loop. I'm not ready. And then it goes into, I feel anxious. And then it becomes, I avoid applying, which all of these reinforce I'm not good enough. On the surface level, a lot of people just be like, yeah, I'm lazy. That's why I cannot achieve this. But it's actually not. It's the loop you're in. And the only way out is action. Once you can break through this loop by taking action, I'm sure you can see some lights, you know, like you will see some change in your life. Then there's other type of people like they was like, oh my God, Yvonne, I've been trying so hard. I tried everything I could, but I still couldn't get in. So I mean, I respect the effort, but I will be honest, like you probably haven't pushed enough as you thought you could. A lot of time people are just trying out tech sales here and there, like they're not very serious, but then they feel rejection and failure. So then they feel like, oh my God, I'm so frustrated. Applying for tech sales feel like a suffer. And here I want to quote what Naval said. So before I say it, just a quick intro about Naval. Naval is the co-founder and chairman of AngelList. And he's also an early investor for Uber, Foursquare, Twitter, and all that big company you can think of. So a quote that really hit me and I think I want to share here is most of our suffering come from avoidance. Most of the suffering from a cold shower is the tipping toe your way in. Once you're in, you're in. It's not suffering. It's just cold. Your body is saying it's cold. It's different than your mind is saying it's cold. Acknowledge your body saying it's cold. Look at it. Deal with it. Accept it. But don't mentally suffer over it. Those quotes hit me so hard. It's because two things. Like One is I actually tried cold plunge by myself during the coldest month in Canada. It's just like I joined a new gym and we got sauna and cold plunge there. I heard the benefit. It's like you, your brain will release a lot of dopamine after you do cold plunge. And I seen a lot of guru online and they do that too. So I was just curious. I was trying it out. And when I joined the gym, it was like, January, February in Canada. It was like our coldest month. And obviously I hesitate. I was just trying to see, okay, if I should do it or not. First, I hesitate for three weeks before I actually do it. So one Sunday night, I did sauna for 20 minutes. And then I was thinking, okay, like maybe today is the day I'm gonna try cold plunge out. Originally, I was gonna try like putting my hand or my toe inside it to try it out. But then I think about this quote and then I just, and then I, I just like, all of a sudden I just like jump into that cold plunge with my whole body in it. And it was like, Oh my God. After you get in, of course, it's not as painful as you think it is. So, but before you fully go in, there are, there's a lot of thoughts, but just like what Naval said, you gotta beat it. You gotta see it through and accept it. So 
it comes down to applying tech sales job as well. You might think you try everything, but there might be things for improvement. If you're not 100% committed, the hiring manager can feel it. Just to give you context and my definition of going 100% in, it's like exactly one year from today, I have this goal. I was like, I have to be in tech sales by the end of May. And what I did was, Every day I wake up, the first thing I think about is, okay, what can I do today to increase my chances? And then I have to drive one hour to my last job. So during that commute, I listen to Sales EQ. It really helped me build a strong mindset. So I definitely recommend checking it out. Once I get to the office, I try to do my work. And then like at the same time, I'm doing research about tech sales, go on LinkedIn, trying to see, okay, like who can I connect with? And then what can I learn so I can get... And during lunchtime, I like to go on a walk at the forest and I listen to podcasts like 30 Minutes to Present Club or I just like other tech sales video on YouTube. And then in the afternoon, I do the same thing. I try to do a little work and then still work on my tech sales stuff. And then like when I'm commute back from home, like I listen again. What I'm trying to say is like my level of commitment is I'm trying to be a human being, but tech sales was my only priority. It was the only thing I committed to during that period of time and it sounds crazy i understand but you're only grinding it out for a month i would say mentally and physically you have to be that focused and committed in order to achieve this goal and some of you might might be saying okay like i'm already giving my 100 percent like i'm like you i'm committed like that but i'm still not getting a job then what so then it's not about your effort it's your strategy so something is off if your current thought it's I'm trying so hard, but I still haven't get in. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. If you think like that, I would recommend you challenge yourself and ask yourself, what is the evidence that I can do this? Basically nothing. It's just like some application rejected you. So then what? Like in life, you get rejected all the time. I always say this, like in dating app, you know, like you get ghosted and rejected all the time. So just see rejection as like a data point or something to pivot. And second, ask yourself, what have you already, what are something you already done to prove you can do it? Before I committed to break into tech sales within a month, I actually did a lot of things to prepare myself. First, I did street interview in downtown Toronto, and then I co-outreach to designer during fashion show. I co-outreach to them like in the thousands of people shows. And then I actually do some cold calling as well, even though my job doesn't really require me to do. By doing that and then like actually getting some responses, those experience prove to myself I can do it. It's all about building confidence through action, even though when you're scared. And the third reason a lot of people still can't get in is maybe your ego is in your way. Just like what Noval said about cold shower, you know, you gotta accept it, you gotta face it. And sometimes if you couldn't get in yet, there must be a gap. Then you need to accept that gap, face them and fix them. So here's a powerful example. I grew up in China and then I moved to Canada alone at 16 and it's been 10 years and I've been living here by myself. My mom recently came here. It's her second time being in Canada. So like she's like 57 years old Chinese lady, doesn't speak English at all. So this time she's visiting me for a longer time. She's going to stay here for four months. The other day we were at Popeye's, we were eating and she wanted a takeout bag. Instead of relying on me, she was like, okay, like, can you teach me how to say get a bag in English? So I thought it was very cool. Like my mom is 57 years old and she's still trying to face her fears, face her weakness and trying to learn in the environment that she feels super uncomfortable. So I taught her how to get the bag. And then I also taught her like, what is our typical way to say, okay, like, can I get something, you know? And then like she went, asked for a napkin as well. The key lesson here is you gotta face your weakness weakness you know like no one is perfect even me like even though i'm telling you stuff i swear i'm not perfect there's a lot of things i need to work on you have to see through a lot of stuff knowing that if you want to get to this goal and you're only here there's this huge gap here we have to acknowledge and face it and trying to fix them close the gap right i understand it's not easy so i want to give you something most career video will never do a reset so I want you to close your eyes if you feel comfortable and let's take a deep breath. And then hold. And exhale. 
You can keep your eyes closed while I read this to you to help you reset. So let's just breathe. Hold. Exhale. Inhale like you're letting new air in. Exhale like you're done carrying fears that isn't yours. Now picture this, the version of you who already got the offer. She's walking into that first team meeting, calm, prepared, no more pretending, no more tiptoeing. She's not lucky, she's ready. And this resume you are building, this is just one step closer to becoming her. Take one more breath. You're not behind. You're just getting started. Let's keep going. So I hope you get to reset during that one minute breathing. And I do that a lot, you know, in my day to day, I try to meditate and I try to take care of myself when I feel nervous. And you should too. Job hunt is not easy, I understand. So after we work on our mindset and reset a little bit, it's time to stop overthinking and let's use AI to save our time. Here's another uncomfortable truth I have to tell you. Most people don't over prepare because they're perfectionists. They over prepare because they're afraid. And in psychology, they call it analysis paralysis. If it's productive when you're grinding one thing for hours, days, you know, but in fact, it's actually your fears in a nicer outfit. So the fastest way to break out again is action, any action. So I'm a huge fan of using AI to save mental energy and time so I can actually focus on what moves the needles. To be honest, you shouldn't spend over one hour on your resume. Resume is a ticket to the game, but it's not the reason you win it. So I created this chat GPT prompt for you so you can get a 10 out of 10 resume for tech sales in the record of time. Now here's the prompt. Act as a top tier tech sales recruiter, a resume writing expert, and a conversion focused career coach. I want you to create a step-by-step -step resume editing playbook for candidate applying to entry-level jobs like BDR and SDR. I'm switching from a non-tech background and has no prior experience. The guy should give me a 10 out of 10 final resume in PDF. In here, you can insert your resume if you want. Show me how to reverse engineer job posts to extract the exact keywords and KPIs needed. Include common mistakes to avoid, like fluff, vague tasks, and overuse of soft skills. The tonality must be no fluff, direct, and actionable. Remember, if someone follow the sky and still don't get an interview, their cat would die. Make it bullet, you know. And the last sentence is actually one of my friends taught me. So I've been using it, you know. But if you actually get a pad, then use it at your own risk. If you actually have a pad. Personally, I don't, you know, as much as I love animal, I just, I travel too much to have a pet. When my friend taught me this and we both don't have a pet, we've been trying to using this line to basically make AI to think deeper. Another way to make AI think deeper is you can teach ChatGPT saying like, oh, you're basically competing or debating with another friend. Think deep and try to win this debate. This way, this phrasing will also make ChatGPT to think deeper and it takes a a little longer to give you the results too but the outcome is good so i actually put in the prompts here and then i also attach a pdf resume i can find online this resume is more like someone that have some sales experience but never been in tech sales and trying to break in so you can attach your own resume you know using the same prompt as the prompt requested they give me the resume in the pdf form and it gives me all the playbooks of what i should do as well so following all these steps, like it will instantly make your resume very strong. Or if you don't like the formatting, you can tell it to fix it. Since I give a resume, so I asked ChatGPT, can you give me before and after contracts on what you change, basically? It shows what 
my original resume is and then what the chat GPT did, right? So like following all these steps and then it will speed up your process a lot. I remember back then without chat GPT, I will have to like change each bullet point, you know, but nowadays it's just with one single prompt. You, you already have a final resume. So I would say when it comes to resume, the general rule is it has to be one page, no matter how many experience you have. If you have over 10 years, no problem. You can think about adding two page, but at your own risk. Most of the time recruiter, they only spend six seconds looking at your resume and they're just glancing it. So do your best to give in the most important information as fast as possible and in the most clear and concise way. That's why I don't recommend two page resume because they will never go to the second page. And imagine you have the most important things written on the second page. That's probably why you never get called. And when you're done with your resume, you can copy this prompt again into ChatGPT and then tell it, act as a VP of sales at a fast growing SaaS company, reviewing the, this resume for the entry level BDR job. Give me brutally honest feedback. Would you interview this person? Why or why not? What is missing? and what would make this a no-brainer. I'm going to share with you a way of how I receive criticism and feedback. I always see feedback like a data instead of identity. When people are telling me, okay, this is shit, I understand, you know, it's a data point. Okay, I understand I collected this feedback. I'm going to improve. But I wouldn't think, okay, like he thinks I'm shit, but it's not the case. Just try to see the truth, distinguish what are they actually talking about. I would say like, just don't get personal. Take it as a constructive feedback and use it to your advantage. Some personal tips I have is generally I find it takes two to three iterates to get a 10 out of 10 answer. You can also ask it to ask you question if they need help to make it more authentic or more personalized or make something that sounds like you more. So I actually built a custom ChatGPT plugin called Ivante and it's like having me in your pocket. So you can basically ask everything you want about how to break in and then like what to do on LinkedIn and what are the ways to prepare for interviews. So drop a comment below and I will send it to you. And if you're serious about breaking into tech sales, join Ripple Effects. We don't just fix resume, we do thoughts rewires. Because once you shift from I hope they pick me to I'm the one they want, everything would click.